It's a new month and as usual I'm here with five new book recommendations. Five new books that I've read and that I think that you might like as well. So keep on watching. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Floor and I am a New York City based content creator and here on YouTube I post new videos every single week talking about planning and productivity, talking about working for yourself, talking about books as you might have guessed, talking about New York City and talking about content creation. If you like what you're seeing, of course, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell so you can be notified of every time I upload a new video every single week. In this video, and as the title suggests, I'm going to share five new book recommendations. But if you like everything about books and book recommendations, I have uploaded 11 previous videos and there are five book recommendations in each of these videos. So you'll find a total of 55 book recommendations in my channel so far so I will be linking the playlist up here right now so you can go ahead and watch any of those videos if you are on the hunt for more more books. Now with that being said let's get started with today's five new book recommendations. The first book that I wanted to recommend is called Local Woman Missing by Mary Kubica. So this was actually the first book that I read at the beginning of this year of 2022. I'm not sure how I ended up reading this one if I have to be honest. I might have seen a recommendation pop out somewhere. I don't know. I read the plot and I liked it. So I'm going to share a bit of it with you. So you might discover this book as well. This book is about several people that go missing, all women. First of all, a woman named Shelby. She goes missing out of nowhere. Then after some time, another woman and her six-year-old daughter go missing as well in the same town. So it's kind of weird. People start wondering whether this events are connected, there's women disappearing, this local woman missing, as the title of the book says, are connected somehow. And this book starts when 11 years later, after those two incidents, the girl, the six-year-old daughter of the woman that went missing, suddenly reappears again after 11 years. So the whole town is like in shock, like wondering what happened to her, how she suddenly reappeared again. And I don't want to spoil it, but it's shocking. So I have to say that I really really like this book first of all. I usually read this kind of books about murders and mystery and suspense and all that and as I have mentioned before you kind of start anticipating the endings at one point but with this one I was shocked. I was like shocked and thinking that if this happens in real life that I'm sure it does people are awful and twisted and weird and so many different things. The book, I don't want to give it away, but it's a great story. It's a great plot because you are like wondering what happened, what's going on, and then some other things are happening. And then the reveals in the end are more shocking than the whole book was before. And I would say even like a bit too dark for my taste, but nonetheless, I really like this book. I think the author does a great job. I haven't read anything by this author. But this one was so, so good. I gave it plenty of stars on Goodreads and I think you should read it as well. The second book that I wanted to recommend is called The 100 Years of Lenny and Margot by Marianne Cronin. So this was book number two of 2022 for me. This one I read because I saw Ashley Spivey recommend it a lot and I've been following her for a couple years now and I really like the books she recommends. I've read some of them before so I thought this would be a good one and I have to say that in this case compared to the previous book that I mentioned you know what's going on and what's going to happen from the very beginning. Lenny and Margot are two women. One of them Lenny is actually a girl she's 17 years old and Margot is 87. If you combine their ages they make the 100 years and they're both terminal patients at a hospital. So you know and they know from the very beginning of the story that they're going to die. They're terminal patients sadly and that cannot be changed. So because of fate, because of luck and the world, they end up meeting at an art class within the hospital and they decide to make 100 paintings showing things that happen in their 100 years together. So Margot is trying to paint a painting for each of her 83 years and Lenny for each of her 17 years. 
And while they do that, of course, you don't see the actual paintings, but they tell you the stories behind the moment that each of them chose for each of these years. Lots of crying involved, lots and lots of crying, not only because of the memories they share, memories of their families, memories of love, memories of experiences that they lived, but because you know of like their tragic ending that this book is going to have and like there's no way around it. I feel like if you have watched the movie The Fault in Our Stars which is about two kids that have cancer and that they fall in love with each other you are like this is going to be tragic. Well this is quite the same but I think that in both that movie and in this book there's like you have to be able to see the beauty of life despite the bad things happening despite the fact that people might have a terminal illness i like this book i feel like it's like like a warm hug like something that might make you realize how good things in your life are how grateful you should be for the people in your lives the trips you make the experiences you get to live so i suggest you go read this book be prepared to cry but be prepared to also love the story the third book that i wanted to recommend is called wish you were here by jody picolt jody P picolt I, I hope i'm saying the name correctly so this book was another recommendation by ashley spivey and this book is about a woman her name is diana and diana is someone that's really organized like she has a five-year plan and a 10-year plan and a 15-year plan and she is in a relationship with her boyfriend with Finn and they have planned a trip to the Galapagos Islands. Everything is like set to happen. She thinks she's gonna get engaged in the trip so she has that sort of like plan. She has like lots of trips and things to do in the island like the whole itinerary and everything and then COVID happens. So they are supposed to be flying to the islands in March of 2020 and COVID hits and they live here in New York and the situation is like weird you know it's like what's going on it's like think about like March beginning of March 2020 when we were like not entirely sure what was going on and whether or not this was going to last two weeks two months or as maybe no one guessed two years and we're still in this pandemic so the thing is that finn her boyfriend he is a doctor so when this happens he's like at the hospital they told us like all hands on deck i need to stay behind but you go ahead you go on this trip and have fun and text me or send me emails or something so she says okay she's like taking like probably her only impulsive decision in her whole life which is to go on this trip and go alone she gets to the island and the next day the island closes to tourists and to everything so she's basically like stranded with no way out of the island and no suitcase because it got lost and no cell phone connection like everything that could go wrong goes wrong so she has to be spontaneous she has to make new plans which is something like it's really hard for her and it's not in her personality and she meets some new people she meets a family a grandma her son and this men's daughter and she creates a connection with them she starts discovering like things in the island the beauty of nature and starts wondering like what's next for her and whether or not she wants to like go back to this life she had before so this is like the main plot the main idea of the book and i wasn't sure of whether or not i wanted to read a book about covid and quarantine and all that because i felt like it was like too fresh and maybe in a couple of years but not now but I did it anyways and I'm glad I did this was actually my first book by John B. Colt and she does a great job at describing the island at describing the characters and don't want to spoil it much but nothing is what you think it is and the book will shock you to your core like wow wow <laughs> that was like me like turning the page and saying like wait what 
So read it, let me know what you think, and I hope you like it. Book number four that I wanted to recommend is called The Maid by Nita Pross. So this book was actually an ARC, an advanced reader copy that the editorial gave to me to read before the book was actually published. So really, really appreciate and thank you for that. Now let's talk about this book. So this book is about the maid. The maid is Molly. Molly works at a hotel, but she is not really good with like social skills. She used to live with her grandma. It's just like very traditional or very like old fashioned or has like standards that people don't have nowadays and ways of communicating with her co-workers or her boss or the people around her and everything is normal up until one day when the book starts when a very famous and wealthy guest that used to stay at the hotel she's working at ends up dead and she's the one that finds him dead in his room without like even realizing it she's like involved in this death and this possible murder and in some things like going behind the scenes that she doesn't even know and she's not like aware of. I feel like the plot for this book was good and that's why I picked it and I asked the editorial to send it to me and everything but if I have to be honest I didn't love it. I feel like the idea is good and once you finish the book you think okay it's a good book but the first like half or the first like two-thirds of the book were really really slow for me and I had a hard time like connecting with the main character. It reminded me a lot of the book Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine where the main character Eleanor is also like struggling with like social interactions. I don't know for some reason in both those books I had like a kind of hard time like being empathetic with the main character and connecting and because of that I had a hard time reading both books and <laughs> it took me like months to finish that one and this one as well. I didn't love it. I'm not saying it's bad. I know some people really, really liked it. It has great reviews and good reads, but maybe it was not for me. Maybe it had to do with the main character. Maybe it had to do with the plot. Maybe it had to do with the ending. I don't know. Not my favorite, but I suggest that if the plot interests you or if you like reading about people that have struggles dealing with social situations and stuff, maybe it's a book for you. And now I wanted to talk about book number five, another ARC advanced reader copy thanks to the editorial. And this one is called The Lies I Tell by Julie Clark. This one, I am not sure if it was like Ashley Spivey recommended this book or someone else, or I've seen the author pop out here and there. And I was not sure about picking this one up, but I went for it. This book is about two women. One of them is like a shapeshifter. She has changed her name many times times depending on where she lives. She has always like a different job, new job, new people, new connections. And then there's this reporter who has been trying to catch her for many, many years because she did something that change her life. So they end up like meeting again. I think this was Los Angeles, if I'm not mistaken. And one of them is now a real estate agent. The other one still a reporter. And they are like trying to interact with each other when no one is really telling the whole truth because one is, as I mentioned, someone that keeps on changing her story and who she is. And the other one is like trying to discover more about this person. Their interactions are like Kind of weird and the book keeps on changing from one point of view to the other. I really like this book. I have to say this. I want to read more books by Julie Clark. I think that even though I usually read like thrillers or mysteries or things like that, I've never read something like this. Something with like two main characters, two women and this kind of like personalities that maybe are assigned more to men in books or stories. It's a really, really good book. I think that the ending is it's not only the ending, but the things you start to realize as you are reading it, they shock you. You don't expect them. It's good. It's really, really good. I really like this one and I highly, highly recommend it. So that is everything. That's it for today's video and today's five new book recommendations. I hope you like these books. If you end up reading any of them, let me know what you're reading right now, what you have read in 2022 so far. I think I'm at 16 or 17 
17 books so far and I'm planning on reading 24, which should happen if everything goes well. I have a lot more to share with you in upcoming videos, so stay tuned for that. If you like this video, of course, go ahead, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already, leave a comment down below, let me know which book of 2022 was your favorite so far, and of course, give me a follow on Goodreads if you want to know what I'm reading at the moment and if you want to know what's next, what books are on my want to read pile. That is it. I will see you on the next one. Bye!